So for the last four months, I have been using an iPhone 12 mini, and I want to talk to you about whether or not you should buy one in 2024. Yes, definitely buy one. They're incredible. This is one of my favorite phones I think I've ever bought. Maybe the best phone I've ever bought. I've had so many people tell me to buy an iPhone 12 mini, and I finally gave in the iPhone 6 and 7 that I was using, and I just, I went all in, and I bought this phone, and it's been absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> so this is just going to be me gushing, but I do have a few complaints. The first one is the price. I was able to find this on Facebook Marketplace locally from a seller for just a couple hundred bucks. I think I spent $220 on this phone all in, which considering the price of a modern smartphone being upwards of $1,000, $1,200, $200 isn't bad at all. That's one of the good things about buying used older phones is that you get the phone at a lot cheaper of a price. Obviously, it's a used phone, so there are some negatives with that, but generally speaking, this phone has performed exceptional, especially for 220 bucks. Next is the size. This is a 5.4 inch screen, which is the smallest phone Apple's made in many, many years. And I was concerned it wouldn't help me stay off my phone because it's still such an attractive display, such an attractive phone and everything about it works so well. But I must say, having used it now for the better part of a couple months, I would say without a doubt, that this has made me use my phone less. Obviously, if you want to use your phone less, you do have to commit to doing it, but having a smaller phone that's less engaging, that you have to hold a little bit closer, that's just a little bit smaller in the hand, that's not as engaging with the second you pick it up, like some of the Plus models, I promise you, this phone will make you use your phone less and just basically use your phone as much as you're supposed to use your phone, which is a big deal to me because I know and I think that too many people spend way too much time on their phones and it makes their lives miserable. So the size is great, obviously, because it can fit in my pocket. It can fit a lot easier when I was running a lot. It was really easy to take videos with this because it's just a lot smaller than any other phone that I owned. and it's not as big as a plus model. Those plus models can be absolutely massive. You know what I have? Hang on a second. I have an 8 Plus that I've been testing out that I'm going to do a review on. Look at the size difference between these two phones. I mean, it's absolutely night and day. I think this phone will make you use your phone significantly less. Whatever the heck this is, <laughs> this is this, this just looks like a phone addiction. This to me, obviously it's still a nice display and you, you are still going to have to choose to use it less. But personally, I have really enjoyed using my phone a lot less. Next is that there are still several years of support for this phone. I expect two to three more years at the bare minimum to of support, security updates, and everything for this phone. So it's running the most recent iOS. Everything on it obviously still works. It's like the latest and greatest of everything. So you're going to be getting the most recent security patches, the most recent iOS, everything. You're gonna be getting that for another couple years. That's one of the good things about Apple. I know a lot of people complain about them. I obviously really like Apple. Uh, but one of the best things about them is that they support their phones and they make their phones last for an extremely long time. I mean, this phone is now three generations old. They're on the 15, this is the 12. But when you look at it, it, this phone performs as well as a modern phone for 95% of the time. There are sometimes it doesn't. I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it's as good as a modern phone. It's not as good, but it's basically as good. Next, which is the biggest thing probably for me, is the cameras. Do they still hold up? These cameras are remarkable. They are so unbelievably good still. They do HDR. The, the pictures and videos you get from them, they are their phone videos and phone pictures, but for phone videos and phone pictures from a, a three-year-old phone, they look really, really solid. Do, do they look as nice as this camera or a more modern smartphone? No, they don't look quite as nice, but they're 94% there compared to an iPhone 15. 94% on a photo that w is only 20% or 30% capable of what a big camera like this is capable of. I, I personally, it doesn't bug me very much. I have a big camera. If I want to take a nice photo or a nice video, I'll just get the big one out. But this one is great for capturing those little moments. I have two young kids and just being able to whip this phone out, capture the moment, put it away is really great. And I, it's a lot easier to have this phone on me because it's just so small. I mean, it's smaller than my hand and I got, I have basically little girl hands. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm just roasting myself, but really this phone, I, I, the cameras are excellent. The front camera, not bad. One thing I've noticed is that the cameras seem to always be smudged up. And I think this is a thing with a lot of people. Clear off the lens. When you're taking a video, clean off the lenses before you take a photo or a video. I don't want to see the smudge on the photo and video. This phone, for some reason, I think it's the size because I, I sort of rest my finger on the camera lens a lot. So the size of this phone makes it so the camera lens is always smudgy is what it seems like and on a bigger phone like this iPhone 8 Plus, my fingers don't even reach up there. I, I have tiny hands. I have two kids though. So, I, but anyways. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next is the screen on this phone. This is an OLED screen, which means the blacks are inky black. The screen itself looks really sharp the way that it wraps around the corners and looks just really generally pretty nice, especially with the Face ID. I kind of always liked the notch. It was distinctive. It's something. It's not the most unique something. Apple's very minimalist in their design, but I do enjoy the overall screen design and the colors are good, except for when it gets really dim and I flip it to night mode. It, it's green. I, I'll show you a video here of it, but the, the colors of the, the screen tint really green and it's really weird. I've never seen that before. If I turn the brightness up enough, I don't notice that, but you, it's weird. I, I don't know what that's about. 99% of their time, the screen looks incredible. I love the screen, but there's this weird, when it's at night, the screen's super dim and I have the nightlight yellow light turned on. The screen literally looks green. It's very strange. It's something I've noticed. You shouldn't be using your phone that late at night anyways with the night mode on it because you should be reading a book or going to bed or I don't know, a, a cooking dinner for the next day or taking a shower. But if you're somebody sometimes that checks it out, it does, it does go a little bit green. The next thing that I really like about this phone is the fact that it has face ID. I love face ID. I'm a huge fan of Face ID. I love just being able to quickly peek at my phone, see my notifications without somebody else seeing them unless I want to see them. I really, really enjoy that. I love Face ID. It's so quick just to be able to buy things, just looking at it. I, I although I do this weird thing where every time I pull it up and, like, <laughs> and I think about taking this video or like this thing as taking a video of myself, I, I'll be sitting there like, you know, you got the like double chin, you're sitting there like this and then, and then it starts to Face ID me and I go, let me just like correct myself. I don't know if anybody else does that. That's something that I, I do all the time. And I'm always thinking like the little Apple intern that's staring at me through that screen is like, this guy looks terrible right now. Like fix your posture. <laughs> Either way, I love that this phone has all the modern features that a modern phone has. I, I do love the thumbprint. I mean, I, I, like, I love both of them like kind of equally. I, I don't know which one I like more. I think thumbprint's a lot easier to get into your phone, but face ID is nice for the using your phone. You don't have to do anything to unlock anything. It just, it does it automatically as opposed to having to move your thumb. This is a really, I'm, what am I complaining about? <laughs> They're both incredible. I like them both very much. I have no problems with either, but there are a couple reasons why not to buy this phone. And this might come down to more of the fact that this is just a used phone. One of them is that I got it and it was a little dinged up. You could see on the camera lens, there's just, there are a few dings up on the camera lens and that's just, that's the nature of buying a used phone. It's not going to be in perfect shape. Another thing is that it's a used phone, so clean it. I mean, you gotta disinfect the crap out of this thing because if you don't disinfect the crap out of the thing, that's gross. So you gotta clean it. You gotta clean inside the charging port. You gotta clean inside these ports here. You gotta clean up here. I always just use a Q-tip with some isopropyl alcohol. That always works super duper well. These phones also are waterproof, so I mean, I'm not saying dunk it underwater, like don't, don't hold me liable, but what I'll do is I'll just, I, I will literally take a sponge with soap and just clean it like that's the, I, you can't clean it better than that other than throwing in the dishwasher or throwing it in like the washing machine that'd be kind of funny too so you have to understand that what you're when, what you're getting into when you buy a used phone and also the battery life is going to suck this one's only at i think 72 percent capacity so there are moments when i'm filming a 4k 60 frames per second video on the back camera where it will stop filming it's very strange i'll show an example of it here you just like you just feel so good about everything i've done and you can just see that what happens is i'm filming 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 and just cuts out it'll stop Stop recording video. It typically continues to record audio, but I've had it cut out audio too. I'm 99% sure that that problem would be fixed if I were to get a new battery in here. It's only happened, if I've taken 250 videos on this phone, it's only happened like two or three times, but it's the type of thing that you just notice. And you know, I, I don't want to miss moments, but if I guess if that's the cost of where I miss one out of every 25 shots or 50 shots, part of it, I, I don't know. I'm not going to complain too much. So th that's pretty much the only negative with this phone is that it's a little dinged up, it's used, and that can be a little bit gross, and the battery is not great. But for the most part, this is a for sure buy. I, don't, I can't tell you the perfect price to get it at. I would personally try to find it at about the $200 price point or cheaper. I always try to buy things that if I buy it and I don't like it, I can sell it back for the same price or more. Obviously, it's the type of thing where if you spend $250, it, like that's still one fourth the price of a brand new phone. So the difference between one fourth and one fifth at this point is 50 bucks. You're talking about either saving 800 bucks or 750 bucks. It's still a ton of money. So I would just suggest picking one up is really what I would suggest. Doesn't really matter the price, but just don't buy it for like 800. That'd be crazy. So thank you guys for watching the video so much. I want to give a, that's the end of the video, but I want to give a quick, quick update. I know I've been gone. I know I've been crazy sporadic on this channel. I, I have a new YouTube channel that I'm really focused on that I'm really in love with and I've just I feel like I owe this channel more respect because I haven't posted since October. 
to my wife. I talked to her about it and she's willing to help me out with this channel. So we should be posting consistent videos coming up coming up soon consistent videos which i'm really excited about i do miss talking about technology just all this great stuff there's so much out there that has changed with the the apple vision pro that i'm looking forward to talking about so thank you so much for sticking with me through all these ups and downs if you want to see a more consistent upload schedule i will post once a week every monday at 10 a.m on the scott Turner channel i have it linked down below it's it nothing to do with tech it's like kind of self-development, not really self-development, just stories. I, I call it self-development through stories. And so that's really what that channel is. I've linked down below. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. This has been Sky with Technical Eclipse. Peace out. I forgot I used to do that.